we are going to start with this transformer node though, right? So you've logged into Kaggle, uh, you found hopefully this transformer link, and this is the code that we are going to run. It shows you the, when I run it, right, the kind of output that we got, right? So let's uh, create a copy of this notebook in your account. So you click on these three dots, and you hit copy and edit notebook, right? So what this is going to do is it's going to copy the uh, the environment that was used to run this notebook when I ran it or when this version of it was created. So Kaggle constantly they update their notebooks, and so the versions of libraries are going to be very different if you just start a new notebook versus if you copy it, right? So in this case, please copy and edit because this will make sure that you're using the same environment. If you don't do that, you may face some issues adjusting the code for the newer libraries. So keep that in mind. So this is very important, okay? So we are going to copy and edit this notebook. And at the top of the notebook, I've made this comment about versions and also linked the repo, the GitHub repo that I was talking about. So the first thing uh, that we need to do is we need to install this the breadth visualization package, which is how we are going to uh, visualize the layers of BERT. So BERT is this, many people would say, the model that started it all, or the, the famous model for, a language model for text that started the recent revolution in this sort of transfer learning methods where you were not training models from scratch anymore. You were downloading a pre-trained model and applying it to your scenario with very little training compared to what you had to do before, right? And those models usually are trained on you know, like the internet, right? Basically everything, all the text out there that we have are thrown at this model. And the reason why you can do that is because it's kind of like a self-supervised learning approach uh, where you, you kind of fill in the blanks, right? You drop some words from a collection of text and you try to predict them. We learned that at that time, the community learned that that was actually a very useful task for learning language. And it's very easy to implement in code. And so we could do this, right? We could train on massive amounts of data because it was self-supervised. We are going to, what we are going to do is take this model and just kind of explain what it's trying to do uh, by visualizing it. And in order to do that, the first thing we need to do is execute this code section over here, right? So the bed visualization package we are going to use and uh, the tensor to tensor package is based on, right? Um, so, so as you can see, already the code started running, right? If you are trying to do this on your local machine, by now you probably have to install some dependencies. It's gonna be a long, sometimes days of work. But by using Kaggle kernels, you can just start running the code right away and nothing to worry about. Okay, so it's still installing. In some cases, I may need to go to the static code just to keep things moving. It seems to be still working. There will, there will be some errors. Sometimes not everything works, um, but not everything is uh, required to work. Let me go back to the rendered version just so that we can see what happened there. Right. So, yep. So you see, we, even before I was getting some errors, I just ignored them and that wasn't a problem. So, you know, you can, if that, this is happening to you, just check if things are working first before you despair because these notebooks come with a lot of pre-installed things and not all of those things are going to be applicable to you right so the error that might does not mean that it won't, your notebook won't work right um but ideally we don't want to see it right of course now that it appears we've finished running that section so we've installed the code that we needed to install we are going to import from, yes, now we are going to use the transformers library, right? And I hope you've heard about the transformers library. You probably have, unless you're a complete beginner, uh, because it's just everywhere now. And if you haven't, then you should uh, know about it, right? Because it's it has made a lot of these things super easy. And so we are going to use it. So the first thing to do would be to um, execute this from transformers. You import a tokenizer and, uh, model of the bed type right so let me see yes so my code uh, okay the text is quite visible on the screen i can see so um i hope that's helpful so you import 
these classes. So the, the tokenizer is going to convert your text. You know, the first thing that you, you have to do when you work in NLP is convert the text into numbers, basically. Right. And that's a tokenizer says part of that. Breaks up the text into chunks and for each chunk it assigns some number and then that all that goes into the model and the model can do stuff with it. Right. So of course there's more to it, but essentially uh, that's what the tokenizer will do. So you do, you need a class for the tokenizer, you need a class for your model of the bread type. And then uh, you use this from pre-trained method to load your BERT model into an actual instance of the model, right? So before you just loaded the general class, now you need a particular instance of it. You specify what kind of BERT model you want, right? There are so many of them, different sizes, different numbers of parameters. So maybe we reduced, uh, some methods were applied to reduce them. On case, in this case, means we don't care about uh, the case of the letters, whether it's capital or lowercase, right? And often uh, that's a reasonable place to start for a lot of problems. It simplifies things. Uh, so that's what we're going to do in this case. We want to visualize what's going on in the model. And the model works using a mechanism called attention or self-attention. And so we are going to just set this output uh, attention variable to true. And then we do something similar to for the tokenizer, right? And so now we just need to execute these two sections. So execute that. So there's just a play button next to each uh, section of code that you just press it. Uh, uh, and then, so that loads the model. It executes the code. What happened? Uh, it looks like an issue. That was weird. Did you see what happened? I pressed the button once and it said I can't execute it. Or some error occurred and then I pressed it again and it worked. So, um, yeah, of course. So, this is our life, right? <laughs> Sometimes things don't always make sense to us, but. It's working now, right? So what it's going to do now is it's downloading the models and downloading the tokenizer. The model is kind of large, right? So in this case, it looks like 440 megabytes. So it's a large model, right? And of course, to hold all that information from the entire internet, you need something large. And so this is where, and you know, and this model, apart from being large, uh, very expensive to train to begin with. And so some people, uh, say we need to think about the environmental impact of all this stuff because sometimes it seems like we are just playing around and not always uh i guess doing useful things so i mean we should we should definitely think about the environmental impact i just want to say that but now we are going to enable some uh, javascript code because we are going to do an interactive uh, visualization of this attention the self-attention mechanism and the notebook contains this code, which uh, what it does is it takes out, takes the you know the tokenizer and the model, and then it computes uh, the attention for any input sentence, right? Or any any input collection of text, it computes the attention, this attention, which we we'll, I'm going to say a bit about what attention is, uh, just some a way to think about it, if you want. Um, but we need to compute it to visualize it, right? And this is what uh, this section of code achieves. And really, what we are, we are going to do first is create this input IDs. Okay, this is the the part where uh, we co we convert every section of text to some representation in the vocabulary. So, which index of the vocabulary that does does that word? Uh, correspond to. So if there are 65,000 words in the vocabulary or chunks of text that we want to detect in the vocabulary, then we have, you know, a big, you know, dictionary of size, 600, 65,000, whatever I said before. And then in, we assign to each index, we assign uh, one of those sections of text, like there or a, e, right? Maybe entry 10, right? And so this Mapping allows us to convert 
the text into numbers, right? Which can then be processed because computers can't think, they think in numbers, right? So we need to convert the numbers. Um, so essentially we take that and we pass it through this BERT model and we compute this attention, okay? So let's execute this section. Um, and if, if you want to, in Hagen face, if you want to see what's in the model, you can just print, execute the print statement on it. So let's do that. And to give you, you know, the architecture, the neural network architecture in there, right? So uh, if you go through, you see the details, but we are not gonna get into that. Don't worry about that. Okay, so now we, we take a sentence. In this case, uh, he didn't want to talk about cells on the cell phone because he considered it boring, right? That sentence was constructed, uh, uh, the sentence again is, he didn't want to talk about cells on the cell phone because he considered it boring, right? Um, let me see. Okay. So here the word cell means different things, right? Cell phone and talk about cells, right? Whatever may be cells, biological cells, right? So this is a deliberate construction to see whether this model can distinguish those different uh, uses of the word cell, which is one of the things we expect this model to do. And so this is like we executed it to show just the numerical representation of the output, right? So we can send in the sentence, we can encode it into a numerical form. So we are checking that first. Uh, we can convert those IDs back to the tokens that we broke them into, right? So just to visualize what the tokenizer is doing, this, this section of code helps you visualize that, right? So we take this huge sentence and using this code, uh, we first create the numerical representation and then we take it back to the text, right? Convert those IDs back to tokens. And so just to see what those tokens are. And you can see that, right? So the first token is he. Right, the second token is didn't without the T, right, with the apostrophe. Uh, and then the third token is that T that attaches to the didn't to form didn't, right? So this is how the model breaks up the text, and you can keep if you want the details. And then the first token CLS is kind of indicates the beginning of uh, the sequence, and there's one called SEP or SEP, which indicates the end of it or separation between two of them, okay? So now uh, we're going to just show this uh, attention. And here it is. So it gives us that JavaScript code that we initialized before is going to enable us to look at this. And so if you look at the depth of the sh shadings, right? So if you say select didn't, you can see that the shading on the left-hand side for t, uh, is very um, heavy, which means that there is a strong relationship between those two chunks of text. And of course, if you think about it intuitively, that makes sense because, right, they're the same word, right? So you expect there to be a connection, and there is, right? And then to want, you see there's another, there's, there's also a very strong relationship to want, but it's less, right? And didn't want. So that's more like a semantic, probably a semantic relationship, right? What what did he didn't, right? What did this person didn't, right? So like like subject verb and those kind of things, right? So you can think about this different columns of these shadings as different relationships between those two chunks of text. They could be, uh, uh, you know, are they in the same word or they could be some kind of semantic relationship or subject verb relationship, some kind of uh, meaningful relationship like it. but. Really, the model is probably breaking it down into some linear combination of them, whichever way it makes sense to it, which may not necessarily be our understanding, like subject, verb, and so on. But either way you look at it, if you think about the relationship between the words and you look through the shadings, you will see that it makes sense. So what is attention? Attention is just a weighted average. It performs a weighted average uh, between the sequence and itself because it's trying to find connection or which uh, 
which tokens are related to which other tokens. In that, is in order to understand context of any given token, right? So this sort of model is an improvement on the previous models, which we used to call static, such as word to vec because they didn't understand context. It was always one number coming out of this, uh, these models for any input word, for instance. These models change that. So now, depending on context, if you're talking about cell phone or you're talking about the cell, prison cell, it's able to use this kind of mechanism to distinguish between those different uses based on context, based on what's around it, based on its relationship with those things. So that's really what attention is. The math is very, when you see it, it's very intimidating, uh, but really it's a weighted average that uncovers relationship between section of text and other parts of the text sequence, which allows you to understand context, right? Uh, or the model, allows the model to understand context and react to it and be more, you know, meaningful as a result.